Alright everyone, today we start off talking about why Trump should run in 2024. One of the reasons is actually it's it's almost selfish on my part as a content creator more than it has anything to do with Trump. Uh, but there are numerous reasons. Some of them are, are more simplistic and it's like, duh. Others are a little bit more complex. Uh, and some of them, of course, are still up in the air. You've got to realize Beijing Biden may be screwing everything up, but he's only four months into his asterisk administration. So there's the possibility that things get better. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I, I can't say that with a truly straight face. First and foremost, though, if you're watching this video on YouTube, keep in mind there will be a pinned comment below as well as links in the description. Links to four other video hosting sites that I use. I make four videos every day. Only two make it onto YouTube, usually due to content or, or algorithmic constraints. Also a link to my Substack. I'm doing journalistic content. You can sign up on the email list and get alerted to when I make articles there. Those are fully sourced journalistic style of content. Just something I wanted to branch out into and it's already paying off dividends. Uh, but it's free, and I don't mean in the money sense. Uh, I'm not going to have paid subscriptions on Substack. It's, uh, I, I probably won't have an audience large enough to justify it anyway. Uh, here we go. Number one, uh, there will be a link in the description archived, of course, a little bit about why it's speculated by some people that Trump probably will run. And it's vex it vexes the neocons, because they're like, oh no, no, not the Trump era again. Not a Republican leader that will actually do what they said that they wanted to do and got elected to do it. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to get elected and then do nothing. You're supposed to get elected and do what Biden's doing, which is do a 180 on multiple subjects, like on elements of the border, like on student debt relief, like on <laughs> tax reform for the lower classes, or, or not screwing people making under 400 k a year. Or like trying not to start wars and be diplomatically shitty. Or on guns, uh, specifically AR-15s. Basically, Biden has already pissed away uh, what little mandate he had. And, and of course, Hong Kong is a huge mandate. He got more votes than anyone else in history. Hong Kong. Asterisk administration. Now, here's the thing. The first, and I think the most significant reason, really, is the lack of a sophisticated, talented opponent. Keep in mind the three possibilities as to who Trump would run against. He either runs against Biden, who will be 82 years old. He's already got verbal problems anyway. Can you imagine in, in three and a half years how advanced those will be? He's already destroyed elements of his mandate. He appears like he's not going to give the left what it wants with student loans and so forth. He can make a half-assed attempt and blame its failure, which is inevitable on Manchin, that's not going to fly with the leftists. They're going to expect him to magically solve their problems the same way the Republicans, without giving Trump down-ballot support, expected Trump to fix all their problems. But Trump made an attempt, and he was partially successful. Biden's either not making an attempt or has already failed. He's already let go of multiple uh, significant key issues that he campaigned on. So that's the first possibility for who Trump would be running against. A loser. <laughs> Jimmy Carter. There's a reason. Do, do you think that it's even remotely organic that the the Republicans are casting Biden off as being Carter-esque? Oh boy, what a what a comparison that brings up when you have a comeback kid with limited political experience, best known for being on TV like Donald Trump, makes him look even more Reaganite than he did before. Number two possibility is Kamala. The problem with Kamala is she wouldn't be an elected official at all. She would be an appointed individual. She will almost certainly do a Hillary Clinton and run on the I Have Breasts platform. That doesn't go well with female voters. They want to hear actual issues and not be patronized. That's not going to work. I'm patronized. Uh, that wouldn't work. And she's a psycho. And she's not good at debating. She's arguably worse than Joe Biden at times. She's just not good at it. I don't think that the optics would be right. I don't think Kamala Harris would be able to win. I, I think it almost wouldn't matter who she's running against. The third possibility is they either primary Kamala aside or she refuses to run at the end of that, and there's no incumbent. The problem is you'd essentially be handing Trump at least a half-assed incumbent advantage because he had been president and whoever he's running against wouldn't have, unless they dig up Jimmy Carter and have him run. Wouldn't that be funny? They literally had, they're like, well, Biden was basically Carter anyway, only more demented. Carter's a lot older, but at least he's, he's capable of moving on his own. He's capable of, of choosing what to eat at night. He doesn't eat just bran muffins and kale shakes and have of someone else dress him. So he, it's an improvement, you see. We're bringing back the roaring 70s, bringing back the ballroom blitz and Led Zeppelin. Okay, that sounds good. I, I, I don't, I don't want to make a campaign poster for Jimmy Carter, just to be clear. 
So that's the first reason. This, who's he going to run against? Old demented dude who is, who is a loser, psychopath who can't debate her way out of a plastic bag, or a non-incumbent. And, and look at the non-incumbents that'd be available. Who are they going to run? Can you name a single other person there that would put up a credible campaign? Well, the handful of people that could potentially fill that slot, like Joe Kennedy, got kicked out. They, they, if you had the Kennedy name and you have someone who's not even quite 40 and they're like, well, here's the comeback kid, he's going to run. The problem is that it's been made impossible by the leftists. The leftists kicked out some of the people that would have been potentially capable of running. What, Liz Cheney's going to run? She said, oh, I'm going to stop Trump. I'm registering as a Democrat to fight him. Yeah, I'll go over really, really well. She's about as sharp as a goddamn marble. That's the reason number one. The second is slightly selfish, which is that if Donald Trump mounts a presidential campaign, it no longer becomes possible for big tech and the legacy media to try to censor him without facing deep, deep goddamn questions about the First Amendment. It would shine a huge light, an enormous fucking floodlight, on the issue of tech censorship, and I guarantee some of the sites would back down. Those that don't would probably find themselves hoisted on their own petard at some point during the Trump administration, which I think like is not would happen. Third, it would just be pure Trump. Would anything be more Trump than getting elected against all odds against Hillary, Hong Kong losing against Joe Biden, and then coming back because his opponent sucks, which is something I speculated could happen years ago, to be the next Grover Cleveland? Can, any, can anyone think of anything that would be more Trump than that? By the way, if he runs, I do not speculate Mike Pence would be his running mate. Not because, a lot of people like the MAGA hat crowd have a problem with Mike Pence. Like, well, he didn't hold line. He didn't stand his ground. He threw Trump under the bus. Fuck Mike Pence. Mike Pence doesn't have that kind of personality, and he never had that sort of backdrop anyway. He was chosen essentially as a fig leaf to the lame establishment. That's basically what Mike Pence was. Mike Pence was basically Trump's acknowledgement of, hey... I represent a different brand of Republican, but a lot of you don't like that particular brand, so I'm giving you the VP position as, as a silver medal. That's basically it. But because he got dropped and stabbed in the back, Trump has been on the warpath since the time he left the White House. That signals to me that he's willing to take up a non-Orthodox running mate. I think that he would be wise to choose DeSantis. Based on COVID, economics, gun control, Law and Order versus Riders, he ticks every goddamn box. DeSantis would be the perfect running mate, and then after Trump's gone, DeSantis would be in a real goddamn good position to run again. Here's the other part why he should run. Over the next years, I can't imagine, based on the first few months of Biden's asterisk administration, based on his, his pervert presidency, I can't imagine the situation getting much better. You've got unemployment ticking back up, he inherits, Biden inherits an economy that had largely recovered and continued to recover. It's now reversed. You've got, you've got more people uh, uh, that need jobs than jobs available. Part of this is Biden's fault. Part of it's blue state governor's fault. You still have a pandemic, although they're desperately trying to downplay its severity now because you've got a new administration. That's exactly why they waited until now to do the, the mask mandate reversal. By the way, that's because nobody's going to listen to it in hot weather anyway. Last summer, people were panicked enough that it worked. This summer, they're like, well, it's not going to work anyway, so we're, just, we're going to very coyly suggest that now it's no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. It's not because you would have civil disobedience. That's not why at all. Really funny to watch that. You've got probably, in my estimation, more inflation. You'll have, you'll have stagflation. Unemployment will begin ticking up. The cost of living and the cost of goods will continue ticking up. Inflation will take hold. People's wealth will begin to disappear. People vote with their wallets. They vote their economic self-interest first. Add on top of that the very real possibility you're going to see the U.S. drawn back into Afghanistan or get bogged down in Syria or end up fucking with Iran or some other country because Joe Biden's cabal, the people running the show, are a bunch of war pigs. There's a reason why all of these people are like, well, Liz Cheney's such a good person. George W. is a real patriot. They love war. They love killing your children. Well, when your child is, is over in some godforsaken desert or mountain range getting shot at, maybe you're like, well, maybe the administration that's causing this to happen is, isn't the one that I think should be continuing to run the country. Plus, Trump is an economic genius. 
Well, let's just not even, let's just be blunt about it. Economically speaking, he did a very good job. On COVID, he did a good job. People, it's funny to see people uh, giving Biden credit for vaccines that in some cases were fast-tracked by the Trump admin. Most of the vaccines people are getting were fast-tracked by him. Biden wasn't involved in that decision-making process. That was in the last year of Trump's presidency. Think what you will about vaccine or whatever, but if you're going to give credit for that and, and assume that it's important, you can't give the credit to Biden. It had nothing to do with him. He wasn't in charge. They wouldn't even let him in on security meetings there until the bitter end, which is, by the way, a good uh, choice, I think. Um, Trump is in a, in a very good spot to potentially run. Again, the only real thing that could happen uh, would be health problems at this point. Health problems, or he just decides not to run and instead decides to endorse, like, DeSantis or, or Cruz runs or something, which I, I don't think I'd support Cruz. Um, also, the other problem is there aren't that many Republicans that conceivably would have that kind of wow factor. W without Trump there, let's assume he doesn't run. My list is basically DeSantis, who may or may not run because he may just be busy cementing his, himself in Florida, or, or, or Rand Paul, who I, I don't know if he's going to run again. He, he's not really making any particular overtures. I think that he would default to being on the Trump train. I think a lot of people are going to be hesitant to get in until they get a better feel for whether Trump is going to run. They're going to begin pressuring him within the next couple, certainly after the midterms, they'll begin to pressure him to make a decision very, very early on. He's still technically in campaign mode, although the lame streamers don't really see it because the thing is he's been blocked out by the legacy media and he's been blocked out by lamestream tech. But again, that could end up, by necessity, legally speaking, reverse. If you have a presidential campaign, where a person is running for the highest office in the land, and a bunch of billionaires are preventing them from being heard, that would bring up a massive constitutional problem. It could end up before SCOTUS in an expedited fashion. By the way, that would probably be the best goddamn possible thing that could happen. Also, if Trump uh, gets in there, he might get another couple of Supreme Court justices. Can you imagine... Can you imagine the gaskets blown if Trump gets in there's Cleveland style, gets another two or three justices so that it's literally the Trump court? Oh, it'd be funny. We should do it just for, even if you think, well, Trump sold us out on the wall, do it for the lulls at that point. Now, what's the alternative? There's no third party alternative that's viable. The LP has sold out at this point. I'm waiting them for them to get their soul back instead of sounding like a bunch of fucking Democrats. Anyway, they're trying to out-out Biden the Bidens. No, no person's illegal. Throw the border open. It'll help the economy. Okay, now that's, that's, that's the LP of, of the Ron Paul era. That's exactly what all of us millions of independent voters want. Yeah, no, no thanks. Green Party? Yeah, maybe AOC can join the Green Party. It'd be, it'd be a good member. It's funny, the other problem, there are still a lot of religious voters in the United States. What are the leftists doing right now? They're making everything difficult for Biden and Pelosi and Schumer, the yesteryear Democrats, by backing Palestine, by saying free Gaza. Now, of course, I don't have a problem with that in a moral sense, but a lot of those Democrats, evangelical voters do. Believe it or not, a lot of their voters are religious Christians. Not necessarily overwhelmingly Protestant, but they do exist. Especially in certain states, like, hmm, no, you think, oh, West Virginia, you mean where Joe Manchin is from. This totally isn't going to cause a fucking problem. No, no problem, don't worry. It's the Republicans that are schismatic because of Liz Cheney, Mitt Romney, and George W. And that's basically it. Everyone else has embraced Donald Trump. He's got the party. He's the leader of the Republican Party. He's the leader in exile, though, because you're not allowed to hear what he has to say because a bunch of fucking billionaires are afraid of him. I think that that's a, wi a winning ticket right there. That's about all. Peace out.